Um, thank you very much for coming along to Peer-to-Peer -peer Fundraising Pages for Marketing Automation. Possibly one of the most exciting presentation titles I've ever seen. Um, so Thanks. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> he did it, basically. That's what I wanted to say there. Um, I'm Rich. This is Owen. Owen will be sitting down. I'll be standing up. That's how you can tell us apart. Um, so we've got 45 minutes. Uh, we're going to go through a quick run through about us, our connection to Civi, how long we've been um, integrated with it. We'll talk very briefly about, we are here to talk about fundraising, so we're going to talk about fundraising needs and what exists in the world and, and how they're met, how those needs are met currently. We'll talk about what we did and quite importantly why we actually did it. Uh, we'll talk about the successes we had, uh, we'll talk about what we learnt from potentially not those successes but the things that maybe didn't work so well. Uh, and we'll also talk about what we're going to plan for the future, how we're going to sort of take what we've got and optimise it and use all the amazing tools and uh, things that Civi can offer to make it a better product for ultimately our supporters. Um, so here comes the marketing spiel. We are Leukemia and Lymphoma Research. Uh, we've been beating blood cancer since 1960. We were set up by the parents of a young girl who died at the age of six from leukemia. And her parents were very determined people and they didn't want anyone to go through that experience that they went through. So they set up fundraising on their own to fund research into a cure for leukemia. And this is something we've carried forward in the 54 years that we've been going, we've been here. Um, historically, research remains, is currently still one of our key priorities. It's one of our objectives. We want to beat blood cancer. We want to ensure nobody goes through this. But as the years have gone on and the work that we've done and our partners have done and people that we know have done, um, the landscape's changing a bit. People aren't necessarily dying of these things anymore. There's people living through these diagnoses. There's people surviving these diagnoses. So as an organisation, we've recognised that it's not necessarily re medical research in, in that area that we should solely be focusing. We need to start thinking about people and patients and supporters and people that we support and we need to make sure that we're giving them what they need. So we need to identify those needs. So we're currently kicking off two large pieces of research within the organisation, looking at those needs, looking at those people, and trying to identify and build relationships and engage with them. And key to that is CIVI, and that is why we have this relationship and why we have this integration with CIVI CRM, is to help us understand the people that use us and we use them, really, at the heart of it. Um, I'm relatively new to the role I've been head of digital for just under four months now, so I wasn't here at the beginning of Civi CRM. So I'm going to let Owen just tell you a little bit about the history of, of the relationship between the two of us. So again, some of you will have heard this before. Apologies if you have. Um, so we've been live with Civi since around November 2011. Uh, I arrived just just as we started implementing, so literally mapping the data from one or the old system to the new system. Uh, we have a policy of using open source software wherever we can. So our, CRM, our CMS is Drupal, our CRM is Civi CRM. We are currently implementing a open source telephone exchange, which I didn't know existed, but apparently does. Uh, even for me, for my analysis side of it, I will look to use open source tools where we can. And it allows us to integrate things better, it allows us to build things more rapidly, and also we've got a duty to our donors to spend their money wisely and using open source software although it isn't free, is carries out our duty to our donors better. So we are probably on the larger end of the installs within the UK, um, not globally perhaps, but within the UK at least. Uh, as an idea of scale, we have about 525,000 contacts in the database, uh, roughly 2 million contributions. Each year we process about 20 million pounds worth of contributions through Civi. Uh, we have about 105 staff who could all technically log in a city. Not, many, not everyone does, I'd say about half of those are regular users. Some very heavily, all day, every day. Some people just logging in, perhaps use city mail, or these kind of things. Um, like I said, we're one, we're one of the largest, but we'd prefer not to be. You know, we, we try to take part within the community. We try to encourage other organisations to use city. Uh, I'd prefer if we were a medium-sized organisation, there were people who dwarfed us using city, because it's better for the ecosystem. Um, it's very much a dynamic system that we have. Um, it's not a static system that we were live with in 2011. We've continually tried to add new functionality in if it doesn't exist, or use functionality that's out there that we thought we could improve the business somehow. So when we launched, it was very much a, not a copy of the old system, but very similar to the old system. Um, it was processing income, doing that kind of stuff. 
we are increasing as years go by uh, the more CRM focused uh, aspects of it, making sure that every contact with every supporter is in the database so we can use that information and we can use that to build better relationships with our supporters and with our fundraisers. And on the subject of fundraisers, next slide. Um, so we're here to talk about fundraisers and fundraising. Um, we as an organisation, um, do you know what the voluntary income was last year? I know the year before. Okay, Thanks in, for asking me that question. <laughs> in the financial year 12-13, um, we had roughly 19 point something uh, million pounds worth of voluntary income. Um, anyone who's not familiar with the charity scene within the UK, voluntary income is income that's uh, generated by people. It's not coming from government, it's not coming from trusts, it's not coming from investments, it's people donating their own money. So as an organisation like the Eastwood family, people who've been affected by blood cancers, leukaemia, lymphoma and myeloma um, will offer their support to us. And that could be a gift in their will. Um, that could be setting up a direct debit uh, using City. It could be uh, sending in a cheque. It could be shaking a bucket on the street. Uh, but one thing we have historically focused on quite a lot is sports fundraising. Um, more so perhaps than other charities, uh, especially of our size. We're kind of medium uh, within the UK, I'd say. Well, large, but the medium end of large, if that makes sense. Um, so sports fundraising. Sports fundraising allows us, although we have these fantastic supporters who've been personally affected by uh, blood cancers, um, there is a limited amount of people who've been affected by blood cancer. If we want to be the organisation we want to be and to fund the research that we want to fund, we need to reach outside those people. And sports fundraising allows us to do that because we can reach to people who just like cycling or like jumping in lakes and running and cycling. It's the Blenheim Triathlon. Entries are now open if anyone's interested in doing all those things for us. Um, so, as well as taking part in events, uh, other people will organise things like the Blenheim Triathlon, the London Marathon. These are events that are run by other parties and we buy places and they are supported by them off us or fundraise for them. We also run our own events. So, London Bikeathon, uh, you can see people up there, um, is one of our uh, flagship events. Uh, it's been running for about 12 years, I believe, off the top of my head. Um, it's thousands of cyclists that took place three weeks ago. Uh, end of August. End of August. Birmingham's, yeah. And Birmingham Bikeathon, we launched this year. Uh, another new big fundraising event. So people can do 26 miles, 52 miles, 100 miles, um, and they'll cycle and they'll fundraise for us. Uh, we've also got London to Paris events. So sports is, is big for us. Um, and we need to be able to support uh, the fundraisers that, that are doing sports events for us. And a large part of that is peer to peer fundraising. So we have people who buy places, and then they will say to their mates, hey, I'm doing this, sponsor me. And that's where we need to be able to, to use the tools that are out there and to build better tools uh, to enable them to do that. So what do they need? What do fundraisers need in order to raise money for us? Well, they need a place to raise money for us, clearly. Obviously, that's the most important thing. But there's more to it than that. It's not just somewhere where they can put a big pot of money and give it to us at the end of the day. They want a way of tracking their fundraising. They want a way of tracking their giving so they know how much they've given, how much they've received. They want a sense of that they're making a difference. They want a connection to the cause. They want recognition. They want a way to thank people, share successes. And a lot of our supporters want a chance to give something back. They will have had a connection to blood cancer and they want to just give back to an organisation that they see as making a difference. And there's a lot of things out there that do this. I'm not going to name any names, sort of the, the people in this, this world, that offer a lot of this functionality. You know, they're, they're there. And the reason that their existence proves a gap in the market, these are commercial organisations that are making money. And as charities, we just like have to hold our hand up and go, we dropped the ball a little bit. You know, we, this is something we should have done. Um, and people are starting to do it. There are examples of um, sort of, I mean, so white label... So you know, some charities start to build their own, or some starting to use. So these are the commercial products. There's others out there, things like Believe In. Um, I've noticed a trend um, a bit recently of people buying white-labeled um, fundraising products. There's uh, an agency called Chameleon who offer one. There's a couple of other ones. And it's basically a tool, but branded up within the charity's uh, brand, so it looks like it's part of their site. Cancer Research, they've got their My Projects pages. Um, if you look to America, um, projects like Charity Water have their own fundraising pages. So I think there is a, a slight trend to move away from some of these tools, uh, fantastic as they are, um, to charities wanting to build their own thing. I mean, just giving revolutionised the market when, you know, 10 years ago, 
when people were using paper forms and all of a sudden it was like wow everything's here you don't need to track people who said they'll give you 20 quid after your event and you're trying to chase people around to get all the money these tools allow people to do that far far better but i think now charities are looking beyond these tools and we certainly work yeah, yeah. so the big question is why would we or anyone else build our own and I've been getting the role for four months, so the person that actually was there when we built it will take you through the sort of story of, of why we built our own. So, one of the, this is, these aren't in any particular order, uh, but I'll just go with what I put down first. So what, what cause are people fundraising for? So, what we found, there was a lot of people, um, say they get a place in the London Marathon, um, and they say to my mates, right, I'm running the London Marathon uh, for the Gimlin Fund Research, and the people who are sponsoring them, all they see is the third party just giving Virgin Money page with them do the marathon. They don't know why that person is doing the marathon. So if they have been affected by blood cancer, they don't know the story behind um, why that person is donating to that charity. Because what you see is you see the logo of the people who are running the fundraising page, not necessarily the logo of the charity. They might not know the reason, but they also might not even know the charity. They may just be, I go on and support Owen. Yes. No clue what Owen's doing it for. So. Yeah, it's just Owen's doing the marathon, sponsor Owen. Not Owen's doing the marathon to beat blood cancer. I want to help Owen beat blood cancer. So that was uh, kind of one of the key motivations for us. Um, we like things integrated. So if we've got our own event system through City, which is fantastic. You know, people are going straight into our database when we're running on our own, our own event entry systems. Um, so if we can integrate stuff with that further, then great. We already had a, a slight integration with Just Giving, so if people entered an event, they would then get bounced straight off into Just Giving to set up their page, but we felt we could do that slightly better. Um, integration with events pages, so that it's one seamless <coughs> experience is another key factor for us. Um, I'm an analyst, uh, I like data, so by doing our own pages, we get more data. We can find out where people are coming from to land on those pages, we can find out all of the nitty gritty bits of which bits of the page they're clicking on, all those kind of things that will help us improve ultimately the amount of money that we're raising. Um, and also we get the more details about the donors to the fundraisers. If you're using third party tools, you get some of the data about who's sponsoring who, but mostly you just get anonymized lines with 10 pound, with 15 pound, with whatever else. If you're running your own system, you get all of the data so you can use that to help support the charity to target people who might be interested in finding out more about the charity because they know which cause that person is running the marathon for. So you were using Just Giving? Yeah, we were using all of them. Prior to using CBCRN? Yes, yeah, yeah. I mean, still, we still in do. some respects, we still do. Like yeah, some supporters it's not gonna go away. will choose. And then that's, right. this is about giving option? them an option as well. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we'll integrate this with the events, but if someone wants to go away and use Virgin Money Giving or Just Giving or whatever else, then they're free to, we're not gonna stop them, they're tools. Um, we would end up losing money if we restrict people to be able to do yeah, that. Yeah. A lot of people are motivated by um, the amount of money they raise. So that if they've historically got a Just Giving page with a large number, the amount of money they've raised, they want to go back onto Just Giving so they can get that number bigger. Um, so as we can add more functionality to our own pages. Um, the pages that are out there with the third parties, um, some of them haven't moved on in five years. You know, they look, might look slightly better, but there's no new functionality there. We can build that. It's less admin for us. We don't have to import stuff. We don't have to download an Excel sheet from there because everything's going straight into Civi. Um, we can increase engagement with supporters by offering them new tools, by offering them more functionality. They feel more part of the charity. Uh, we can personalise profiles. We can give people their giving history and everything else. But ultimately, because there's no fees, we'll raise more money. So, this is what they look like. Um, I will demo them now. But I'll briefly talk about how they were, they were built. So, at the moment, we are only really offering them as part of event registration. Um, you can't just go online and set up a page for something. So, if we're doing a London Bikeathon event entry, they can get a London Bikeathon page at the back of that. If somebody was going to do something other than London Bikeathon, sit in the bathtub of Bittens or cycle from one end of the country to the other, we haven't got the functionality yet to be able to do that. So what happens is they go through the city event registration, and then instead of at the end of that page saying thanks for entering that event, they actually go straight into set up your page. It's seamless. You know, it almost seems like you're still entering the event by setting up your page and setting up your fundraising target. And what that does for some people as well is it lets them know that this is a fundraising event. Uh, with the best will in the world, not everybody does fundraising for events. So if you kind of get that into their heads that oh, actually, you know, this isn't just about coming and cycling. This is about raising money to beat blood cancer. This is your target. 
uh, you can better do that. So it goes through to the event registration. If they don't have a Drupal account already, if they aren't logged in, it'll create a Drupal account for them. Um, so this is where we get technical with what Civi has already and what we built. So Civi has the concept of personal campaign pages. Um, and we didn't use the front end of them. Uh, we built our own Drupal pages. So this here is a Drupal node. Um, it's not a personal campaign page. Uh, we did use the underlying data structures of the personal campaign pages. We are APIing everything into them. Uh, but it's actually a Drupal node. It allows us to do things that I'll show you in a sec, uh, which we couldn't do with personal campaign pages. Personal campaign pages as well don't look so good out of the box, if anyone's seen them. Um, so, uh, where was I? Fundraising page, we create the node, um, and then we will create a PCP. So we create the PCP data structure underneath, so everything that would have happened from that PCP page still goes into the, the structure, that's underneath it, but we've created it via the back end almost as an API call. Um, and then when people have done that, we set up activities. So we create fundraising pages being created, and then we can schedule uh, emails and reminders off the back of that. So I will now jump into demo. That's desktop. Oh, that's desktop, okay. How do I jump into demo? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, extend, <laughs> it's an extended screen, so you just drag it across. I drag it across, all right. Then can I see it? Uh, okay, let's do that. Um, how does this look? What wizardry is this? So, um, first of all, we, they look slightly different on normal pages. Um, we wanted to make it look like it was a user-generated part of the site rather than our main site. Um, when you're a medical charity, when you've got information on there, you want thinking was that we'd have one section of the site where you could tell it was the charity, or one section where you could, if people are doing their own blogging, if people can do their own thing, it's there, so there's a kind of authoritative um, thing with text. So, but you know who it's for, it's the Kingdom Informal Research, Peter Blood Counters. Uh, this is Chuck Will who set up this page. And he can choose what his page is called. Um, it's upload his own image, set his own targets. He can put his own profile here, upload his uh, things. If I go Are you just filling in a Drupal node creation form? Yeah, I'll, I'll demo the, the, the setting up of it now. Um, like just giving, like anything else, people donate, their messages come up the side. Um, if anyone's aware of him, he's quite famous. Anyway. Um, there you go, 50 pound. 50 pound, yeah. Um, so blogging with missing images. Uh, so this functionality doesn't exist on third party tools. People aren't able to blog, people aren't able to upload videos, and this kind of stuff. It's not difficult to do from a Drupal side, um, but it doesn't exist in these third party tools. So the idea is that people can blog their journey of their fundraising. If they're doing a marathon, they can put their training videos up, they can say, uh, you know, I broke my ankle, it's going to take me a while to get back, or whatever else. Uh, this chap has um, uploaded his own video here. What we do as well is we can put in a video there, so if people don't change it, they still get the standard video. So we can put our own content in there, which will help them fundraise, which says why people are sponsoring this person to be blood cancer. Standard share tools, those kind of things. So the page will still work, essentially, even if they choose to put the bare minimum information. Yeah. They can, they can basically, yeah, on the setup, they can almost do nothing can they get the page. Yeah, they still get like a standard, this is why we're beating blood cancer, this is why we're fundraising sort of page. Um, if I do that. Yeah. Okay, so from the back end, um, is anyone aware of setting up events? So okay. what we do is, as part of the Drupal module, it adds a link into uh, the event setup. So if I go to, the Wi Fi is a bit slow, so oh, better now. It's not our system, if anything. <laughs> yeah, this isn't our server being slow this time. Um, if I go to online registration, I get an integration type here. So I can say, I want this event to integrate. And DFP, we should point out, sorry. Uh, DFP is our name for PCP. It gets confusing. If anyone can come up with a better name, yeah, please, so DFP, I'll buy you dinner. DFP stands for Digital Fundraising Page. Um, we haven't got a better name yet. This is an issue. Um, because nobody knows it's, people call it, oh, I'm going to use your just kidding page. That's how, you know, in, in 
people's head these brands are. Uh, so we've got DFP, so we're going to turn on DFP. I've got just giving integration there, if we want to do just giving integration. Um, and that means that when I register for the event, instead of going to the thank you page, it'll take me into the uh, page creation. So I I'm going to open it in the incognito window, just so I can uh, show it from someone logging in from scratch. I mean, eventually we'll move everything over to DFP. Um, just giving what was there previously. So we used to have a just giving integration where people would start creating a just giving page. Now they'll go so into our own page. So that you, for each event, you have a separate. You have two event pages for the same event. That you use? No, no, no. We just we just choose one or other. Um, now we choose DFP. Uh, so this is our fake event. Um, right, it's me. Can't look at it. Right. So this is the form that they fill in? This is the event form. So this is a standard silly event form, albeit um, fairly heavily styled. Do you want to go and rob Owen? Yeah. Well, no, actually, I'm going to pass oh, <laughs> Well, the <laughs> removal of just for this, the just removal for this, van's coming just tomorrow. Just <laughs> My wife's not happy. I'm from the city call. Do that way. Yeah. I really haven't talked at a conference. I can't. Um, so it depends on doing 100 miles. How many So instead of sending me to thank you, it's already registered me now. If I, I'm not doing a paid event, because I can't well put my yeah, credit card details here on a video being filmed. Um, so normally that would take me to the contribution <coughs> page. This I've set up as a free event. So I'll, I've already got a participant record now. I'm already registered. If I left this page now, I would still be in the event. But we're nearly done. We're not done yet. Um, so I'm say my... Uh, targets. I think there's probably room there to put in a suggested target. Mm -hmm. Feature list. No, 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 <laughs> yeah. It's uh, there. <laughs> and depends. And because I'm not logged in, um, I need to put in a username and password. We, we, sorry, it's saying it knows I've already got one. So it's looked at my email address, uh, seen that there's a Drupal account attached to that, um, is now asking for my username and password. I hope I know. Are we looking at the web form here, or what, what building is it? Um, web form. Is it web form? No, I don't think it's a web form. What we're on there is a separate this page. This is a city. Yeah. Yeah. Is it web form, is it? I thought it was. OK, web form. <laughs> <laughs> there's a form, there's a form later, see. which is CTools, so I'm not sure which one is which. Okay. This might be web form, but I think the payment form is CTools. And then it's going to take me straight into editing my page. Um, so I've already put these bits in. Now I can say, right, I'm going to so log you in. I'm logged in. Um, it's created the node. Uh, I'm registered for the event. And now it's uh, editing the page. <coughs> and then at the end of editing the page, it'll create an activity uh, within Sydney to say fundraising page setup complete. Um, if people drop off here, it doesn't. But we can use that, the fact that somebody has registered and got so far, but without doing it, to send a reminder email later. Yeah, seven days later we can say, ping, why haven't you finished? Here's your link to finish the page. Um, Yeah. 
Well, how, did, how did they get to the beginning of the process? So they, they've got, because you, you kind of logged into Civi and then uh, back out again. So, uh, just from the site, really. Um, so it's a standard event registration. So yeah. How do they know? At, at what stage do they get the option of going just giving, or do you just have a? No, they don't get the option. Get option. We choose so whether the choose? whether the event is going to be a just giving integration or our own integration for every for every event. If they're a sponsored event, some events aren't. Uh, cool. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we put in some standardised text there. Uh, we've also put in a standardised video there. Um, so if people don't choose to upload anything else, there is still standard content there. Uh, a thank you message that they can choose to um, customise if they want to. Um, offline fundraising, so this allows people to update their page if they've done a pub quiz and that all goes towards their total or anything else, they've collected cash from their auntie who can't use a computer, they can still upload it here and update their total. And a Twitter handle, which I don't think we're using for anything yet. No. We're just collecting that currently. Um, that's still uploading. That's still gone. <coughs> 16. 16. Um, let's choose not to wait for that. That um, offline fundraising, are, you, are people coming in and updating that amount? So if you have 500, you did a pub quiz, you got 20 pounds in, is that, do you yeah. then just go in and update, you update it? it yeah. to five if you go back to the, the Fireflies page, has at the bottom yeah, of his right. um, thing has 500 pounds of offline fundraising. So he's gone in and he's added that in himself. So. Um, how is that? How is that registered as a contribution to you? Is it only Tisn't. the total sum at the Tisn't. end? Or just so no, we wait for that to come in as a separate contribution. Yeah. So at the minute, that just updates their, uh, their total there. Yeah. People want their total updated, you know, it's important. I've got all this extra money as well. They want that reflected on their page, but we're not gonna call it a contribution until we've got it, yeah. either by them paying by credit card or sending them a check or whatever else, however else that money comes in. Um, but yeah, we wouldn't, we wouldn't create a contribution for it yet. Um, as for getting to the events, you know, they get, Get involved page. And they might say, uh, ends of uh, find one we're doing ourselves. And the parent is registration yeah, open for that, yeah. Anyone wants to cycle from London to Paris, you know, with the do it dance? It's quicker by train. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We on now? Anyone? <laughs> 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 Pretty much just uploading other pages. It's a big file he's uploading. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to save that without it uploading, see what happens. Save this waiting. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. So let's go to here's one I made earlier. <laughs> Um, so the, the you, you'll probably get about to explain. So the, the numbers on there, they've set their target value. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They can go in and edit mm -hmm. essentially what, how far they are along that. Yep. Yeah. Um, they have control over that. So there's yeah. a certain amount of honesty involved in this. Sure. They can sort of. Uh, I'll show you quickly the next. I won't go all the way through the next page. Um, oh, I'm logged in. That's why. Okay. There's a lot of live demos, they always yeah. go so smoothly. <laughs> <don't they>? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's well for my demo, I'm leaving the thank you tomorrow. <laughs> All right, I went to donate. No JavaScript. Why did it say no JavaScript? Yeah, that should be a. Uh, no. That should be a modal pop-up. Yeah. Oh dear.
can't see what's going on this page. So you fill out what you want there. We can message. Normally this would be this a, is a nice pretty modal window that goes. Yeah, that goes imagine top that of it. in your heads. Yeah, and, uh, rather than going back to the main site. Feel free to leave here and go and donate. Um, just yeah. to test it out if you really want. <laughs> Suggested yeah. donation about 100. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is because I'm in, uh, this is a new machine and I'm in an incognito window. So it's filling up a new JavaScript thing. So no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Should have tested this really. Anyway, so that's. Thank you, Bob. No, I'm okay. I'm going to show you something else. So that would set up the page um, and then put the donation on it. And then what we do as well, the kind of marketing automation side of this is. So, sorry, that's just the standard contribution page. Yeah, well, no, it's using C tools, uh, the Drupal framework. Does anyone, can anyone explain C tools better than I can? I'm not a Drupal head. Shay. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, uh, it, it provides uh, a number of tools for uh, things like uh, forms and maybe windows in a standardized way. Um, so that's what it does. So But yeah, so basically we rolled our own form, uh, which isn't web form, which isn't contribution form. It goes off to SagePay, which is our payment provider, and then APIs everything into Civi. And, and, and the reasoning for that? <laughs> I'll come on to that in a minute. There's a few slides ahead we'll talk about successes yeah. and what we learned. Uh, <laughs> that's one of the things we learned. Um, yeah, um, we'll come back to that. <laughs> So the marketing automation side of this. So we've done a lot of um, customization work around what's called scheduled reminders within Civi. Um, we've added in a lot more things you can do with them. Uh, and we've renamed it automated emails. Um, so we're doing things uh, like welcome series for, for uh, certain actions. So there's a direct debit sign up. You get a welcome series of emails saying thanks for donating, welcome to the charity, other ways you can get involved. Uh, but we also use them quite heavily um, within the fundraising pages. So we have things like DFP fundraising page set up complete one hour after they get that activity. Just saying thanks for setting up your page. So once the creative fundraising page activity, again that gets API'd once they've finished editing that page, is completed one hour after saying this email. Um, the mailing report, we have to see it. Um, are we sending it from Civi Mail rather than sending it from the Scheduled Reminders Framework, um, which is a enhancement we made with another charity, um, and that gives us the mailing stats. So if you're using the standard Scheduled Reminders um, functionality, you don't get opens and clicks, uh, but using this, you do get opens and clicks. We haven't got to the point of using them to optimise them, but we've got the data there, so we will be able to start optimising. But you haven't done anything with experimenting with different timings for sending out the emails, I suppose. Not yet, no, but with that data we can do it. We can, we can say, right, well, this is better four hours after or one hour. Um, but unless you're tracking the stuff by using Civi Mail itself rather than scheduled reminders, you can't do that. Um, so that's a customization. That's a customization, yeah. Um, if Torch Power is Invader, they'll be able to, um, to sort it out for you. This is going to look a bit squick. If it does in this preview window, it's only even for us. Um, and just say, you, you know, you're ready to stop and it doesn't have these gaps when it sends it. It's something to do with the preview window on our system. Um, and sends that out. But perhaps the more interesting ones from a uh, marketing automation uh, point of view is what we did with this um, bikeathon is start to incentivize fundraising. So there are people who come along to the bikeathons and things like that who don't do any fundraising. They just come along and they want to cycle. Um, so what can we do to try and incentivize that kind of section of the audience who aren't going to do any fundraising? Um, and that's to offer them some free stuff. Um, so we print up our own cycling jerseys and we have our own uh, shorts. And last year we used that, uh, people could buy that whilst they were registering. And then this year, we, instead of offering it for sale, we said, well, if you raise a hundred pounds, we'll send it to you for free. Um, so what we did is create, uh, claim your fundraising page. Um, again, this is one that goes out to people who haven't yet done their fundraising page. If they drop out of that um, fundraising page creation without having uh, completed the page, they'll get that email. Um, London Bikeathon, there we are. Edit this one. 
So this is a couple of customizations we've done. Um, so there is the customizations for the schedule of minders to allow us to be able to do this. Um, so we can now base it off contributions instead of just activities. Um, so we can say, right, when somebody has donated um, via credit card online, uh, the source is DFP, um, and the campaign is done in Bikeathon. So we know it's just the people who are part of that campaign. Um, one hour after the contribution, send this email. We've also got the hard and the soft credit in here. So what that means is you can send a certain email to the person who's donated, a certain email to the, per to the fundraiser to say that John's donated or Anne's donated or anything else. So it's quite a, you've got a lot of options here to be able to send out different emails. Um, but then we're limiting down by a group. Um, and this is another customization that we've added. Um, of what we call SQL smart groups. Um, so with, to create a smart group within Civi, you need a search to be able to find those people. Uh, what we've done is created a smart group, uh, a specialized smart group where you've got one search, so I can find everybody who's raising money for London Bike Fund, that would be the first level. And what we do then is add in another level where we just paste in some SQL code, which is like an extra clause. So this one here says, Okay, give me all the people who have raised money for the Bikeathon and have the DFP page. But the extra clause there says, have they raised over £100? And have they received this email before? And then, so we can trigger it at different levels. Um, we could have done that with searches and everything else, but it adds a lot of having to build um, PHP pages and everything else. Whereas this one, someone like me or DBM can write a bit of SQL, paste it into a smart group and get quite complicated segmentations uh, out of that. Um, and then that will only fire to the people who've hit 100, then it won't fire for the next one. Same one with 50 pounds, we have one that's saying, well done, you're halfway there, keep going. Um, show the email. <coughs> Sorry? Time. Okay. I'll stop demoing now. Yeah, I'll stop demoing now. Let's go back to some sort of what we learned. <laughs> <laughs> this is just an email. I can show anyone who wants to see the emails another time. site manager talking about Civi and that's what happens. <laughs> Eight minutes to go through the rest of it. Oh shit, sorry. <laughs> um, so what worked? As we said, we give people the choice. They don't have to use our fundraising pages, um, but 60% of the fundraisers chose to use our pages, which is pretty good. <coughs> there was a chunk of people that also did offline donations that we presume did use them as well, but this was a, a survey that we sent out, so people were just choosing their main sort of method of fundraising. And of that, 60, 80% of them said that their experience was either good or very good, which is nice. Um, and 85% said they would recommend it to a friend. So that's all pretty positive um, things for us. In terms of money, um, this product has been live for a year now, and we've raised £540,000. Which, when you're talking in the sort of 20 million voluntary income, seems like it's a good chunk of money. But this was an exceptionally soft launch. This has only been put on our flagship event, so really only been pushed on three events. Um, and to be getting this with no advertising, no create your own, no nothing like that, is quite, we're quite proud of it. It's, it's a really good achievement for us. Um, in terms of average donations, we're getting sort of £24.60, which is pretty standard. It's not massively different from anywhere else. We're not seeing great uplifts in what people are giving. But what we are seeing is People that give through um, DFP, um, 35 to 40% of them sign up for newsletters and things like that, so they go on to further engage, whereas the 10 to 15% there is people that have used other commercial tools. Brackets, just giving. So, I mean, for us, if somebody's running a marathon or doing a cycling event and they've been affected by blood cancer, there's a good chance their friends and family might know the situation of why that person's been affected by blood cancer. So we've now got lots more people in our network can grow and we can market to those people and we can say, hey, why don't you come on to the event or is why don't you do this? as a result of the sleeker integration? Um, knowing where the money's going, I think the, the brand's thing. To it as well, um, the idea of the commercial tools hide that sign up quite well. Um, so we can make it front and center and say, look, you know, if you sign up for this, this is what you get. We can customize that text. Yeah, and they push their own as well. So. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we can see where people come from, we can see where they go afterwards, we can sort of track them far better because they're in our system. We know who they are and where they're going, which sounds slightly creepy. 
Um, and again, this consistent branding and journey. So they sign up for the event, they see our branding, they get our cycling jersey, they have their fundraising page that looks like us, it's all the same, it's all together, and it feels like they belong somewhere and it's part of what they're doing. Um, we've had some nice feedback about it. Um, obviously people realise that people like Just Giving and, and Mind Donate, they take a little, actually Mind Donate, no, Just Giving take a little bit of money off. People like the fact that we're getting it all and they find it hassle-free. Some people feel their friends are a bit cheap, which is fine. Um, but no, we've got some really good feedback. Um, so what have we learned from this process? And this is mostly me coming in as quite fresh eyes on this and looking at the system and how it works and then um, see what I think is going to happen and, and, uh, as we've gone through. One of the things is scale. When we first launched this last October, we were looking at don't like not hundreds of donations, like, like sing, uh, double figures of donations. With our events recently, that's gone up to thousands of donations a day. Um, that's quite an increase. System mm -hmm. potentially not set up to do that. So that in itself highlighted a few issues and caused a few sleepless nights at some point. So there's an, there's an element of there, and um, Mark mentioned it, it's a conditions for future success, I think he talked about. And this is about thinking about the future and how do we set up now so that we don't have to reset it up in two years. And I think by thinking about, well, where do we want to be? What, what success do we foresee for something like DFP? And ensuring that it can handle that increased usage further on now is kind of key to, to success. One of the things that this scale problem highlighted was that while we are integrated with Civi in terms of web and in terms of being here and talking to you guys, Potentially internally, from a development point of view, we don't have the knowledge and confidence in the development side of our organisation to be able to answer the questions when businesses come to us. Um, it's been built by, we have a great relationship with Parvez, he does a lot of the work for us. But when things happen and we have issues, we go to Parvez. And I think by not having somebody in the organisation who has that expertise who we can go straight to and ask a question, I think that caused a bit of a... You know, sort of delay and things like this. And I'm not saying we would ever move away from Parvez in the room, so I don't have to say this. But also, we didn't build this. We no. didn't build this either. No, no. And the, the actual setup of this was done by freelance work. So we, we, needed to bring, we need to bring something in-house so we have the confidence to answer questions. We'll never move away from having somebody like Parvez who we can call on for those big, like, we're thinking of upgrading very soon. We're not going to do that ourselves. Um, but for the more day-to-day -day support and maintenance, we need to, we need to have that knowledge in, in the organisation. And that highlighted this problem that we had with the systems, and you mentioned the fact that there's a bit of Drupal web forms there, there's a bit of Civi there, and there's that. And because it was built almost wholly externally, we potentially didn't have that confidence in how it was built and what the connections were and what data was being passed where and when. And this was highlighted recently, and we just had a, one of those moments where it's like, we need to know more about this, this is our system, come on guys. So we're willing to hold our hands up and say we've got a great system that does, it works, but we need to know more about why it works, to be honest, so we can fix it when it doesn't work. We, we weren't expecting it to be built in C-Tools. That kind of got delivered by the freelancer. Yeah. We were expecting it to be a bit more built into Core Civi, and we kind of, we got something delivered. I was like, oh, okay, well it works, okay. There was slight time constraints to it, and that was a quicker option for him, so that's how it, that's how it happened. I wasn't there, just say so. <laughs> um, <laughs> We found we got some we got some negative feedback, negative-ish. Um, people couldn't find the fundraising pages that they wanted to so they donate to their friends. They couldn't see where to go, and there was a feeling that people want to do this as a team. You know, people, uh, companies and groups already fundraised together, and they didn't know how to go about that or whether they knew who was in their teams. So, in the last thirty seconds, future plans. So, we've taken on board what people have said and the, the sort of issues that we've recognised. Um, and sort of one of the first things we're going to be doing is people struggle to identify who's on their team. Not everyone's as smart as these people and dressed up as chickens. Um, so we're going to be launching a front end for the team functionality. So people can have a team page, they can see the members of teams and they can see what they've raised as a group. So it's, um, it's what they asked for, so it's what we're going to give them. On the sort of key events, we've got a sponsor a friend link now so they can go in, they can search for somebody by name, they get their DFP page. And we're going to look at rolling out that further across the site so actually you don't have to be particularly in Birmingham Bikeathon, you can find it elsewhere. I just like the question at the end there, it just says why Birmingham? <laughs> I think that's quite a good question. <laughs> um, 
And as part of that, we're going to be looking at rolling this out. As I say, this has been Birmingham, London Bikeathon, and London to Paris predominantly. Um, why not do it for baking? Why not do it for running, swimming, cycling, letting people create their own and do all of these things? But before we do this, I think one of the key things to do is we need to find a home for DFP. We need to find a new name for DFP first, then we need to find a new home for the thing that we renamed. Um, and for me, it's, it's slightly split, and I said earlier what caused problems was the fact that connection between Drupal and City was not very clear. And our, use, our users live in City, that's where they are, that's where their, their home is. So for me, it's where we need to be looking in the future to be bringing DFP within City. So it's wholly contained within there, the, do the person sets it up in there, the data comes in there, the donations come in there, it's all housed in the same place. To do that, we need to have more internal in-house knowledge of Civi, we need to have developers, hello Shay, who can uh, look at these things and understand these things and answer questions for the organisation when we need things doing, um, rather than relying on, on amazing people like Harvest. And I'd say that was my one key learning from this and being in this organisation for four months is that relying on external suppliers is great and it will get you so far, but if you are going to do this on any sort of large scale, in-house knowledge is, is essential. It, it really is just to be able to answer those questions straight away is sort of a, a key thing for me. Anyway. And that's us. One minute over. Thank you. If you were going to um, classify the in-house knowledge as something, is that specifically Civi CRM in-house knowledge, or is that a Drupal head, or is that a web developer that's really good at coding everything in PHP? I think Civi, Civi, Civi development. We've Move got on. Drupal. We've got very talented Drupal people, and I think it's just that knowledge. It's almost a confidence in Civi, so it's right. it's not something they can't learn. It's it's a system that it's a system like any other. But it's just being confident enough in the setup and the connections and how it works to be able to answer those questions. Well, it's going to pay dividends for you guys. I mean, half a million pounds in a year of, of one little chunk of functionality. Yeah, and development's probably already paid for itself for the yeah. fees that we saved. Yeah. No. So my question is, given that you're committed to the open source model, what's, what are your plans in terms of giving that back to the community, some of that functionality, you know, as you so, I mean, part of it, the problem with it partly is because it's this kind of weird Drupal hy Civi hybrid at the minute, which is probably quite custom to our system. Um, as we bring more of it into Civi, that becomes more possible. Yeah, I mean, we're discussing solutions. Developing an extension or something like that. Yeah, so we've, we're in a position now where we've got a new we've got database manager, we've got Owen, we're bringing in developers who can look at this um, sort of internally for us. And once, and that solution is likely to go down that path, and then once we've sort of finalised that solution, yeah, that's pretty much the path I would yeah. like us to go down anyway. So I mean, that, that sort of future vision, clearly there's going to be a lot of people interested in that, those sorts of... Mm. Yeah. No pressure. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> it's, well, you know, any time before Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas 2017. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a lot of custom, a lot of custom work there, most of which I'm very jealous of. How traumatic a city upgrade for you? Uh, with the custom work, with the custom work, traumatic. Yeah. So, I mean, for us, it's not so much this stuff. It kind of sits externally. It's the financial customizations we had to make when we first launched. When we launched with Civi, things like batching didn't exist within the Civi core product. So we built our own, um, which is still quite different from the core product. So, the last upgrade with a schema change um, for Civi contribute that we did was hair pulling out kind of stage. Um, it should get easier without that schema change. And then each time we upgrade, we try to take a bit more into core that we perhaps customized. They were like, actually, we can th that exists now. We don't need to have our own version of it. So you're trying to sort of pair that away. Yeah, I mean, we'll always need to do some customizations because of the amount of sort of financial contributions we have to process in different ways. Um, you know, we are kind of beholden to the finance team in one, a certain way, but it, it gets easier. We're starting that process now, so the, the planning for the upgrade starts on Monday to try and ensure that we do do what we can to simplify it in the future, and, and if we do need to rebuild custom, then we do it sooner rather than later. So. Until 5.0, when it becomes a nightmare again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool. Any other questions? Brilliant. Cool. Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. <laughs> Cheers.